Hi everyone, I'm Oliver and welcome to OC Avery. In today's video, it's been a few weeks since we visited the showbirds. Since the initial selection of them, you haven't seen them. So we're gonna have a look at a few of them that have caught my eyes today. That's red poles, that's green finches, and that's a bullfinch cock. So we're gonna be visiting them today. Not only that, but we've also got some new birds in two different lesser red poles and an arctic red pole so make sure you stay tuned to that i'm also going to be talking about enrichment for the birds how to keep them active and interested throughout the winter rather than them sat bored in in just in the cages in their winter flocks or if it's the show birds just keeping them interested keeping them activated active and keeping them stimulated with their environment and then i'm also going to be looking at winterizing the aviaries uh, and how i'm going to do that and the effect it has if I don't do that and want to make sure that the birds are comfortable and a few other bits to pick up along the way. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video and pick up a few tips. Let's get right to it. So for the birds that we aren't showing, well, we're not, you know, we aren't going to be moving them on because there are birds that we, we're just not going to go to a show, but we definitely are going to be using next year in our breeding plans. So for example, we've got eight red poles here. There's actually four pairs within this block um, of which we're going to take to the shows, but I'm having eight pairs of red poles next year. So what I've done is I've separated our cocks into here in these this one larger cage and the hens down below in there and it's about you know we want to keep them active keep them interested and keep them uh you know interacting with their environment so something i've found is that when i do put them like this in in their, their winter flocks essentially i do put the cocks and hens together just for ease of separating out and i can think well i'll keep that one for next year uh, for breeding and uh, we'll, we'll know we'll, we'll move that one on maybe it's not got something that i'm looking for or maybe it's just surplus we've got too many which are too similar um so we've got our cockbirds in here. We've got one of, well, one of which in here is one of the new ones. So what I do, uh, especially for the red poles, they do seem to interact with it and, and, and be a lot more interested in it uh, than do green finches, for example. But it, we've still got to make arrangements for, for the greenies to keep them interested and active as well. So I put red millet sprays in for the red poles and red poles uh, naturally and in the wild, uh, they're, they're, they're always constantly hanging up and down off of things, pulling out seeds from, for example, like birch cones, uh, in maybe even pine cones, and, and they're always little active, always active, uh, and, and picking at little things like that. So what I've done is I put these red millet sprays in for them. Uh, both the cocks and the hens for, for our winter flock birds and, and they seem to be really enjoying it they're always keeping active they're hanging off it they're pulling at it and they're pulling all the seeds off it and it's something for them to do something for them to enjoy and something to take sort of take them back to um that that wild counterpart and that and that um instinct essentially and just keeping them busy like that they seem to enjoy it quite well um and and i'll continue to do this throughout the year you know don't get me wrong you don't want to be doing too much you don't want to be putting loads of millet in for them because it is fatty and can cause like fatty liver disease in them uh, but as a treat maybe once a week or once every two weeks there's nothing wrong with that at all so that's something i've been doing for the red poles they definitely enjoy it and it's it's nice to see that uh you know that they, they are somewhat reverting back to that wild natural instinct uh, uh, of pulling at things like that so whilst we're on the topic of the red poles they are our three new arrivals this week don't get me wrong we're going to be picking up a few different birds probably every every, every often you know every so often every few weeks throughout the autumn where we're picking up something to supplement our breeding or maybe it's something new there's going to be a bit of all sorts so the three uh, new red poles that we've got in so the first bird here is a uh, cobalt red pole. I got this from Stacy Turn. Obviously, Stacy has some. You know, he, he, he has the best cobalts uh, after you know winning gold at the World Show with them uh, in 2020. So th these are fantastic birds, and I managed to get a, a an over year cock from him, uh, which is it, it's it's a brilliant bird. The markings look great. The the colour is really solid. You know, they've not got that expansive white through the chest, which some cobalts can have. You know, some examples i've got here uh, they do have so this bird's perfect it's in that sense the color's really good on it and i think it's a lovely looking bird 
and something I'm really looking forward to breeding from next year. And, 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 that, and that's really good, to be fair. Um, you know, it's a very nice bird. We're going to pair it to either a normal or a cobalt, and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to develop a really good, strong stud of cobalt red poles as well. So then for the other two red poles, I, I was actually given these birds by a really good friend. He, he, he literally said to me, if you can make use of them, then please, please do. And I decided we're going to go for it and we're going to try it. So the first I'm going to introduce you to is a lesser red pole, and that is a pied. Uh, as you can see, it is a lightly pied bird, so it's, it's predominantly all white except a few markings on the flights. We think it's a silver pied but it's not definitive um it, you know it's got those markings which make it look like it uh, but it could also be a, a weird variation of cinnamon for example it could be a cobalt you know it could be even silver cobalt so all we know is that it's a pied and the reason i've got that bird um, is that it's not as it's not as uh, flighty as generally they are and it's nothing wrong with the bird in sort of disease or anything like that the bird was apparently like it from being young and you know i know the chap well enough and the you know the breeder well enough uh, that he wouldn't lie to me and it's got something wrong with it in that sense it just doesn't seem to want to go up to the perches as much uh, it's a bit of a weird example especially a bit weird for a bird but it gets around fine it can fly fine so he just said to me if you want to try it He'll give it me and we'll see what we can do with it. So I've got that bird and as much as I don't look to develop a line of pieds, as much as I really do like them, uh, I'm going to be sticking mainly to our normals, our cobalts and our cinnamons and then a few brown pastels. Um, the pieds aren't something I'm looking to go to, you know, go into much. But if I've got a pied that we can work with and we, you know, I don't know if it's cock or a hen, I'll probably have to get it DNA'd. But then that's something exciting and something to try out. And then the next bird, and this is something which is really exciting. If you saw the live stream the other day, I was really excited about it, but I wouldn't tell anyone what it was. And that's an Arctic red pole. Uh, the same chap has this Arctic red pole here. We think it's a hen. Um, the only thing that's noticeable with it, which is why I was given the bird, is that it seems to curl its feet up when it's sat on the perches. Rather than holding onto the perch, it sort of rests its feet on the perch. Um, it's a bit weird, we're not 100% sure as to why. Um, at, at best, it could be some nerve problem with it, uh, where it may have hit its head as a youngster or something like that. Or it could even have just been a lack of calcium as a youngster, although the rest of its nest mates are completely fine. Um, and I, I did see them the other day, and they're fantastic looking birds. So we've got an Arctic red pole hen as well. Um, I think she'll be fine getting around. She's getting around fine anyway when I've put her into a flight. Um, and, and there's not really any problem there with it. And we think she should be able to breed without a problem. So if I can pick up a cock bird, an Arctic red pole cock, then we might, you know, we'll try and a pair of Arctic red poles. And if we can't, then it's not going to be going anywhere near the lessers. We aren't going to be, you know, crossbreeding our, our lesser red poles with our Arctic red poles. That's a terrible idea, especially how unusual the, uh, the Arctics are as well and rare in the UK. So it's something where I've got it and if we can get a cockbird for it, then I'll see what I can do. Um, and then if not, well, it'll go out in a mixed flight and we might breed something off it. We might breed a, an Arctic red pole mule or we might breed a goldfinch cross Arctic red pole. I don't know. We'll work it out come the time. But we've got this bird. I think it's a lovely bird anyway. And if we can make use of her and she does go to nest, then that's a bonus. But if not, well, she's, she's allowed to retire uh, here and just be something nice to look at. You know, similar to what we're doing with the reed bunting. Um, I have managed to get in contact with a guy who's got a hen it's just that it's going to cost as much to get it couriered as the bird itself so it's 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 racking up a bit but i'm going to see if i can get one but with an arctic red pole i'm really pleased to bring that on and hopefully you are you guys uh, are going to be able to enjoy seeing that over the you know over the course of probably the next few years because i can't see it going anywhere else other than here or back to the breeder if she's fine um and maybe we'll breed some arctic red poles next year who knows so it's been a few weeks now since we chose our birds that we're going to be taking to the shows. We went through the whole selection process of cho choosing the best birds to fit the class that we want to enter. 
So we've, we've got eight red poles which we're going to be entering all into different classes. None of them are going to be competing against each other just because I want to try and get that variation and cover as many classes as possible to hopefully try and get the best results. So there's been a few birds in the red poles at least that have caught my eyes this week. So we're going to take a look at those first. Then we're going to take a look at the greenies. Obviously you saw the twite mule and the reed bunting last week. So I'm not going to be showing them today just in the show cages just because i've literally you know you literally saw them last week i hope anyway if you have been watching that video so we're gonna look at the red poles and then we'll jump over to the green finches so this is the first bird and this is a uh, flight of cock bird clearly a buff bird and it's a normal as well uh, but it's really just taken my eye especially with the shape of it once we get it moving you can see it's got quite a got quite a chest on it it's got some good size to it and it's put on some weight really well so it, it is developed into a really nice looking bird i'm looking forward to having this for next year's breeding season because we've got a bird that's got that sort of shape um, and, and the cobbiness to it as we would like then it's just a case of improving the color on that hopefully getting some yellow birds bred out of it so the idea for this at least would be ideally pairing it to a nice normal yellow hen and we can you know we can get that hopefully get that size passed over and the shape passed over whilst retaining possibly the colour of the mother if not improving and that that would be a really nice outcome uh, this bird is also split for cinnamon isabel and a gate so it's something we've got to bear in mind with that is that um it will throw mutation hens if we pair it to a normal but that's all right it's holding its wing a bit weird right now and i don't know why but no worries but yeah that's that's a nice normal that i've, I've noticed with especially with the shape and the size that's something i'm looking for this here is a current year normal buff hen I think this bird's got you know some great markings and, and striations on the flanks that's that's one of the main reasons that i've chose this as a show bird is i think those markings are, are looking fantastic now something as i've said uh, previously is that the, the the color needs improving for normal it's all right but it needs to be darker and the way of doing that is just breeding more normals and getting in some normals that have got that colour that we're looking for because if you go introducing cobalt from what I've been told cobalt makes the brown black and then you end up where you can quite easily spot where cobalt has been in the ancestry and this has got nothing to do with cobalt this bird so it's it's looking nice and I think it I think it looks a really nice bird to be honest so it'll be going to a, a yellow normal cock bird ideally if it does come to needing to go into a cobalt line then we, we won't be putting the normals back into the normal line i'm trying to develop but really i want to be putting this in with other normals because if we can transfer those striations across i think that would be a very good result and overall i think it's a nice looking bird it's it's working the perch as well in the show cage and it looks all right so looking forward to taking that to the shows throughout this uh, this show season So this is a flighted cobalt, possibly double factor, and we was gifted two of these uh, from a good friend, Rob Evans. Um, so, you know, massive thank you to Rob when we picked him up from those at Stafford. And these are lovely birds, unrelated as far as I'm aware to the cobalts, uh, I, I, you know, the other cobalts I've got. So really, really nice. They, they've got some great ancestral history as well uh, from the lines they were bred from. So it's a, it's a lovely looking bird and it's something I'm going to be taking to the shows. You know, even if it's just for the run out, it's, it's my bird, but I didn't breed it. So all credit goes to Rob for breeding it. And I think it's just a lovely looking bird. Uh, I really like the cobalts. They are one of the favorites of mine in the red poles. So perhaps we'll pair this to the normal, sorry, the uh, cobalt we, we brought in, which I showed you earlier, uh, or we'll, we'll work something out, a good pairing for it. But I think this is probably a yellow bird by the look of it. And it's, it's just a, a lovely looking bird. So hopefully we'll do all right at the shows with that one. So this bird does need a bit more work in terms of show training. It just needs to go on the perches a bit more. But this is a cock bird we bred this year. Current year, cinnamon cock bird. Um, we bred him from a good line, which which took second at the world show. Uh, you know, he's a few generations down, so I believe he'd be the the grandson of, of that pair, which took uh, which took silver. Uh, but a lovely bird. The, the markings are, 
uh, are well defined on, on the flanks of the bird. The shape's quite good. Uh, it could do with maybe a little bit more chest, not much, but just enough to make it a bit more obvious. And I think, but overall, I think this is a good, a good example of a cinnamon uh, here, which in my bird room will be breeding off him next year. What he pairs to, I don't know. Perhaps we'll pair him back to the mother to sort of um, cement that line in, you know, uh, get, get a good good hold on that line uh, to give us plenty of ammunition, obviously, to work with in the future. But I think it's a lovely looking bird and I'm looking forward to taking that to the shows. The only slight um, bit of improvement it needs is you see the white on the underbelly. Uh, it does extend a bit through more through the chest than I was would like. Um, but that's something we can work on over the next few years is the colour and the markings of these birds to hopefully get a, you know, a, a better, better, even better bird. So as many viewers will be aware, and it, you maybe if you've read the Cajun Avery uh, from this week, then uh, then you'll also have seen the progress. But we've, we've bred some, in my opinion, stunning green finches. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's going to be a case of having to compare them to the others on the show bench to really place them at how good they actually are and, and really get an idea of what needs improving when we compare them to, to other fanciest birds when we put them next to the champions birds. Uh, but this is this is probably my better, you know, my, my best green finch cock bird. The, 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 the shape, the size um, is, is really quite good. The, the feather quality seems good as well. The only thing that I think needs improving is the colour. We just need a bit more um, a bit more richness. So what would I place this bird as? Probably an intermediate. It's not a yellow, but it's definitely not a buff. Um, or in my opinion, I don't think it's a buff. It could well be, and we compare it on to others on the show bench, uh, but I don't think it is a buff personally. But it's a lovely looking bird. The only fault I can really pick on this bird at the moment is just its steadiness. Um, it is a little bit jumpy, a little bit more than I would like. I have given it quite a few goes out in the training cage and it just seems to um, yeah, it does seem to improve uh, and as it's in there longer which will be fine for the shows uh, but I would like it especially when I put it in the, the cages be fine straight away a little bit jumpy but overall not as bad as uh, as they can be so that's that's a current year normal green finch cock definitely a bird we'll be working with next year come the breeding season and we'll see how he performs at the shows for us this show season. Just for comparison, I've I've got the brother here of the, the previous bird. Again, another current year normal. The colour on this is not as good as as it is with the you know with its its brothers we've just seen. Uh, but then you know I do still think this is a lovely bird. Feather quality is good. The uh, I'd have to call it the frills, I don't know if that's the correct uh, terminology, but uh, these bits here are looking well as well. You know, I think it's it's good for the bird. Um, don't get me wrong, you just need to settle in the show cage a bit more and just get all its feathers in place. As I can see, it's got a slight flight feather just a little bit out to what we want. But it's a nice looking bird, it's definitely steadier than the previous one. And we'll see how it performs at the shows this year. I think this would be second place uh, and the previous one being first out of my birds. Um, and, and we'll just have to see how they go because the judge might have a different opinion and then tell me why. And I'm more than happy to accept that and learn because that's what it's all about, especially as a novice. I want to be bringing on and understanding and learning as much information as possible on them to make sure that I benefit my stud uh, best I can. Uh, with the birds I bring in, the birds I choose to breed from. So this is the sister to uh, the, the, the two cock birds we've just looked at. You know, again, current year normal. Not bad, you know, definitely not bad, but they are smaller than their brothers. Um, I think the shape is looking, is looking good, and the frills again, they look good, so the feather quality looks quite, de quite decent. Uh, where would I place this bird as a yellow or a buff? Uh, um, it would have to be, again, probably an intermediate for me. And I'm going to find this out when when we take these guys to the shows. Is get some, get you know, get the opinion of of some guys who've been into the green years a hell of a lot longer than me. Will be able to tell me just by a quick glance, uh, as I'm still just picking that up with the greenies. Some some buffs are obvious, some yellows are obvious, but others I, I'm not 100% sure on. But that's 
you know, again, it's a nice looking hen. Definitely improved since the last time you saw them as I've put weight on them. The cockbirds haven't had much weight. The first one especially has had basically nothing. We've just given it a few fatty seeds here and there uh, just for its fat reserves throughout the winter. Uh, but the hens have had a bit more, especially the current year hens, because uh, they'll drop it easier come the, come the, uh, the time we want to condition them. But it's a nice looking bird and we'll see how she performs at the shows for us in the novice classes. So this is the last bird we're going to look at and uh, this is a native bullfinch cock. Um, buff bird in my opinion I believe again, uh, you know yellow seems to be quite obvious with a much redder chest. Um, it, it's looking really well to be honest, I think the shape is, is brilliant, the feathers good, uh, the steadiness is, is, is fantastic, I'm really pleased with. Uh, the only thing I do want to well, I need to point out in probably a future video is just the difference between the size of these and the size of Siberians. This is in a, I believe, a Scottish pattern uh, native show cage, so they're larger of them, and it does look to be doing all right. I think the camera is slightly deceiving uh, to make it look bigger than it actually is, but it, again, it's it's good and it's the correct size we, that we, well, really the correct size we're looking for in the natives. You know, it's definitely a native, no Siberian in it at all. Uh, and it's just a lovely looking bird and I'm really looking forward to taking this to the shows and seeing how uh, how he gets on there. So hopefully you enjoyed that, a look around at a few of my show birds in the, well, the red pole classes, the greeny classes and then the native bully class. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be entering all of the birds, you know, we, I, I can't, I haven't got enough room for them. We've, we've selected a few more than... Uh, the number of cages I've got on the show team, but I'm taking 22 uh, to the Lancashire show. So I'm really looking forward to that and we'll see how I get on. Uh, you know, 22, but that's a selection of greenies, red poles, uh, and, and all sorts of other things. I, I'm not gonna tell you because I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want people to know whose exact bird that is. If you are at the show, uh, and, and you know, I want to leave a bit, a bit of that and I don't want anything classed as marked because that's obviously no good and then, and then, uh, well, it just does you no good and then the birds can't be judged. So, yeah, so that's um, that's a look around at some of the show birds. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and seen something you like and, you know, that that and that's great if you have. So, now we, we're going to talk about a bit more of the preparation side um, for the breeding season. Obviously, it's something we're always looking forward to. It's, in my, for me at least, it's the best time of year I look forward to it. Don't get me wrong. It's a bit harder work, you're feeding youngsters, but it's always surprising and always gets you excited when you find that first egg from the first clutch in the nest. And and, and that's great, and I really enjoy that, getting the chicks chicks out, and then especially mules and hybrids, always the uncertainty with that, and really hoping you've got a full egg, or you know, even when you get, you're getting full egg from them, well, let's hope for something different, you know. For example, you know, come on, let's try and get a, a clear golden mule. That would be brilliant. Uh, as much as I'm not going to be able to produce that because I've only got a normal native goldie, uh, not a pea throat or a chev, uh, still something to look forward to is the breeding season. So there are all sorts of things like that. So something I've done in the preparation is um, about live food. So what we've chosen is seven pairs of feeder canaries for next year. We're going to have four which are technically new colours, so there's going to be two pair of Demorphics and two pairs of uh, Portuguese Harlequins. And then we're having three pairs of small ones, so we're going to be having the pair of feeders we had from Richard Jones of the Norwich Stud. We're going to have a pair of Irish Fancy we got in from Matt Eld. And we're going to have the new pair of Razzers. Uh, don't get me wrong, we're going to breed a couple of straight, you know, we'll probably do first clutch, will all be straight canaries anyway to give us some for next year. But... I want to, uh, you know, make sure we have them on on, on hand for the feeding, feeding duties that they're going to have to do, you know. Or, well, hopefully they don't have to, but if they do, then I want to make sure they're available. And one of the things with, with that is um, making sure they're taking a variety of food, depending on what you what you're breeding. So, for example, if you're breeding connect, if you're breeding chaffies. Chaffinches, they need live food as youngsters. They, they need it. You can't get away with it. They have to. Um, maybe that's also if you're breeding brambles or you're breeding yellow hammers, you're breeding reed buntings, anything that really needs live food 
and let's say you, 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 you lose the hen or she abandons the chicks and you've got these chicks that need to go on the feeders or they're going to die immediately. Well the last thing I want to be doing is faffing about thinking oh I don't know what's going to feed that or I could put it in with a pair of greenies but I don't know if that's too much of a risk. So what I've been doing is supplementing to the feeder canaries which is going to be their job obviously for next year is live mealworms and I'm putting that live food in for them to try and get them you know to try and wean them onto it enough so that come the breeding season if they do have to take anything that that feeds on insects or maybe it's something that there doesn't need it but it benefits from it then you know maybe i don't know an arctic red pole if we manage to breed any if i get a cock bird then we might need them for that they're taking live food already so i can put live food in an egg food draw from them they're going to feed that live food back into the youngsters and it just makes the job a hell of a lot easier rather than worrying if it will survive on just egg food rather than the live feed that we want for them as well. Something just to mention in case you've not done it previously and maybe it's your first year with the birds, if you've got outdoor flights like I have um, and you've got the fronts exposed like they are, I've found that something that can really catch you out is that the really cold weather in the winter and the temperature doesn't really seem to bother the birds but what does is being exposed to exposed to drafts it makes it feel a hell of a lot colder than it does it actually is you know and it can really affect them and, and sometimes kill them so you've got to be careful of it so something i always do is wrap the front of my flights in a clear plastic and it you know it makes it so there's no draft coming through there's all the light that needs to come through it doesn't get hot in there especially in the obviously in the winter uh, and then we'll take it down in the spring and it just seems to really benefit the birds if you do that so something to take into account if you do have outdoor flights and they are open and there's not as much covering for the birds then do wrap the front and uh, hopefully you should avoid any problems there now we are at the end of this week's video so something to show you before you go is i was in the cage in avery again this week so i'm in it every i'd say probably every six weeks to every two months uh, and you get an article on something so probably the next one will be something to do with the show season obviously my first show being the lancashire on the 21st so we just got here and it's just about how the birds have come through the malt as you can see We've got our greenies, we've got a bully, we've got red pole. That, the red pole I showed you earlier, it looks like a chicken in there, the, the shape of it, uh, and our hybrid pairs. And we're going to catch up with all of those in next week's video. We're going to look at the hybrid pairs, see how they're getting on. We've got some really exciting news as well. Something if you want to follow up on a bit more and a bit more updates on them is go and follow me on Facebook and Instagram at OC Avery and you'll find all things on there and you'll get to see how they're doing a bit more a bit behind the scenes and different things like that so if that's something you'd enjoy then do make sure you uh, you follow me on social media as well to get more updates on the birds and a bit of the behind the scenes and extra clips on them and see how they're all doing um so that's that's really it for this week's video not as much to show you we've obviously got a few more new arrivals we'll probably have some more next week but we'll be doing a lot of show preparation in next week's video anyway um because it's you know we've got we've got the first show of the season for myself so it'd be really good to see how how the birds do at that show and you'll be able to follow along with that as we go to the lancashire show i'll do some filming from there show you how the birds get on um, you know my birds show you the birds on the top bench and a bit have a walk around the show hall and hopefully you'll really enjoy that see a lot of about what it's like at a show and if you've not shown before then it's definitely something you should consider doing well there you are so that brings us to the end of this week's video so i hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please subscribe down below we're nearly at 6,000 subscribers and then smash the like button to show me you've enjoyed the video and it also helps more than you can imagine for getting the video out there to more people and showing more people this amazing hobby so thank you very much for watching everyone and i'll see you in the next video